Okay, so I'll just make a very brief presentation about Atlas, what Atlas actually is, and then we'll move on to our amazing speakers today, representing these three companies in Argentina, Bolivia, and Chile. Um, Atlas was founded in 2008 by a few, a group of uh, amazing travel specialists based in different countries of Latin America, who realized that they could uh, collaborate and work together, not only to raise awareness and promote Latin America, but also to share best practices and, and experiences. And well, they realized they had the same purposes, uh, the way of working. So uh, this is the main aim of Atlas uh, today. We are now 10 tour operators representing 13 countries in Latin America. And Atlas, just, just a moment, I need, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, Atlas, the acronym means Active Travel Latin America Specialists. But although we love soft and hard adventures, we also work with different kind of uh, experiences, uh, community-based tourism, ecotourism, luxury, wellness, wildlife, cultural experiences, and so on. So, we are, as I've mentioned, we are united by the same purpose and we are quite focused also on working with responsible tourism and sustainable practices. You probably know a few of these companies here. So if you already work with any of them, you can be sure that if you decided to work with another Atlas company in another company, you'll be, you'll be receiving the same high level of service and commitment. So this is who we are today. And I think that's it. I'll just leave here uh, our contacts. Just this QR code takes you to our um, newsletter form so you can we usually share uh, some interesting news about our members every month it's a monthly newsletter so you're welcome on board and that's it I'll just now proceed to my that's it and <laughs> this is not okay I will invite now Juan from Calpa to talk a little bit about what they are working and um, some amazing experience in, in Argentina. I I'll just ask you, please, if you have any questions, you can put them on in our chat or wait to the end of each presentation and then you can raise your hands and, and ask. Just let, let, let's wait for them to finish the presentations. Thank you, Juan. Okay, hi Anna, good afternoon. Thank you for the introduction. First of all, I wanted to say that it's a pleasure to be a part of this webinar, uh, along with uh, another partners on the association. So let's go ahead and start with the presentation. Um, can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Well, uh, as Anna said, my name is Juan. I'm Juan Villarraza. I'm the sales manager at Carpa Tour Operator. We have been working since 1992, uh, for over 30 years now, uh, crafting active and cultural experiences all around Argentina. Uh, we have been pioneering special group of interests here in Argentina. We also have different types of developments in terms of uh, active and, um, for example, tailor-made journeys and different, different styles that we have crafted along these uh, many years of work. Um, since we work in Argentina, we have locations in very specific areas in, in Argentina, 
We are based in Buenos Aires, that this is where I am at the moment in Buenos Aires. Then we have an office in Salta. Then we have a local representation in Ushuaia, that is the gateway to the Antarctic chips and, and the end of the world. And also we have another representation in El Chalten. Um, the idea is to expand our operation in different areas. Now, for example, we are also having a local um, destination host in uh, Bariloche, for example, and also another special service of hosts in Salta as well. Um, whether if the travelers are adventurous, uh, they like, uh, for example, kayaking, trekking, biking tours, we can handle it. We have done many, many groups in different areas of Argentina. Um, we also are very into the cultural experience of, of the travelers. We don't like to offer just uh, scenic tours, but also to try to get involved and to enter into the culture of the places that they visit. Um, as mentioned before, we provide tailor-made journeys all over Argentina. We do have a very strong presence in the, in the self-drive segment. Actually, Calpatur has been a pioneer for many years of this type of travel. Even now, we also integrated technology along with our self-drive uh, itineraries, for example, with the use of the smartphone with preloaded pre uh, roads. And it's a very interesting and very useful way to travel uh, nowadays. And also we do uh, small group exped expeditions uh, with uh, people with uh, like-minded interests to see different parts of, of Argentina uh, with uh, different uh, type of styles and, and interests. And as well, also we do family holidays. Uh, we customize special trips for all ages. And uh, Argentina, it's a very best place to see and it's a special for for families who want to get a little bit adventurous and, and enjoy uh, different areas in Argentina. And of course, the classic journeys that we developed in uh, all the regions. Uh, Buenos Aires, as you know, is the main gate of entrance to Argentina. It's uh, where all the travelers arrive, then we work a lot in Mendoza and Central Argentina, uh, the area known as the Wine Road, and also all the region of Cusho with uh, San Juan Province, Tarampasha National Park, Ichiwalasto, also Northwest with Ibera Wetlands that is being really popular lately, and Iwasu Falls. And the Northwest that is connected with Atacama, and of course, the Patagonia, also connected with major attractions on the Chilean side with the uh, Torre del Paine. Hmm? Here you have also on the right side of the uh, screen um, representation of the offices that we have in our country. Um, I'm going to also tell you a little bit about the experiences that we want to show to you uh, we, we have done a small presentation of everything that CALPA does. Um, and now we are in some way trying to work to get out of, of uh, the landmarks of uh, El Chalten. This presentation is going to evolve the idea that Chalten is much more than Laguna de los Tres or Cerro Torre, which are the usual treks that everyone visits in Argentina but also to go further north direction to the area of Lago del Desierto, the Desert Lake, to find different properties that can offer the less trodden area, the more wild or the more um, um, isolated area of El Chalten that makes you bring back the sensation of the wow experience that nowadays with the massive uh, amount of people visiting Laguna de los Tres or Cerro Torre uh, are experiencing lately. So with that in mind, in that in, in the idea, it's interesting to see these new places 
uh, with raw nature that can offer an alternative and can offer you also the possibility of an extended stay in El Chalten uh, or maybe uh, have another possibilities. One of the possibilities that we are exploring at the moment is the full day hike Creston Glacier. Um, we are going to move from north to south, very close from the area of Lago del Desierto. Uh, this tour is a full day tour, um, nine hours in total, six hours are hiking. Um, the location it's, uh, where it's performed is 37 kilometers north of El Chalten. The difficulty is medium to high. Uh, it offers uh, maybe one of the lesser known uh, ice trekkings that we have in uh, the Patagonia. Usually when you hear about uh, glacier trekking, you hear about mini trekking, you hear about big eyes in El Calafate and Perito Moreno, or in El Chalten, you hear about the ice trek in Cagliero. Well, this is another option, a newer option that is the uh, Creston Glacier. Uh, it's done in very small groups from one to nine. It has a minimum of, of two passengers. And uh, to tell you a little bit about the, the, the adventure, you are going to be picked up uh, by a private transfer uh, in the morning to your hotel. Uh, you are going to be driven to uh, the area where uh, you start the trail. You have around 40 minutes to walk until you get to the refuge of uh, Valle Criston. There you're going to have a warm beverage and you are going to start with the trekking. You're going to visit a very, very old uh, forest of Lenga trees. Uh, and after a few moments, you're going to start to work uh, your way up because it has an altitude of 900 meters. Walking in a, on the rock formation uh, that is the most difficult part uh, to reach the area of the glacier front. Once you get to the glacier front, you sit on and you put on your um, crampons and you start walking on the, um, on the glacier, uh, which is an incredible um, experience, of course. All this is going to be subject to the weather conditions and the physical conditions. This is evaluated prior to the experience itself. Um, but well, you're going to have a box lunch uh, at the glacier. And then at the end, after a very panoramic and scenic uh, view of 360 of all the area of the Rio de las Vueltas Valley, you're going to uh, go back to the refuge and then back to El Chalten. Uh, here you have some images of the incredible experience that you can live in the Creston Glacier. See, here you have that very uh, hard uh, rock massive that you have to cross because it's the, the path of the glacier. And here you have all the view that you get from above. Also, we wanted to take the opportunity to let you know about Refugio Los Glaciares. Um, this is a, a very interesting proposal. It's a lodge with very, very simple and basic services uh, with 10 um, cozy rooms. And it's located in a very, very special uh, location. Um, it's one of the nicest places that you can visit to try to get out from uh, the regular area of El Chalten. Uh, it's a big corporation and it offers um, also different activities and full board system. It's like in some way are mountains, glaciers and beautiful trees and, and, and uh, fauna that it's uh, enjoyed in the area. Here you have, for example, some of the of the activities offers um, walking towards of four, five, or six hours uh, oh. to see uh, Sendero de Rio de las Vueltas, for example, or uh, the Cagliero Glacier from the east. 
uh, and also Laguna Milodon. Try to imagine that uh, it's a location that has only 10 rooms, so you have almost exclusivity on the area that you visit. This is uh, very virgin, and it's one of the nicest points of view uh, to try to, to see. Here you have some images of the lodge um, Refugio de Glaciar, which is uh, rather simple, but it's good. And uh, they have really good guides to do the, the walking tours in the area. And another very, very interesting lodge and multi-activity uh, area in an incredible location is Estancia Bonanza. Here you have um, some images of the location that you get when you get to Estancia Bonanza. Um, you can do there, for example, mountain bike. Uh, it's uh, in general, it's a medium level. It doesn't require any prior uh, physical or, or experiences. Uh, as you see, you are going to ride your bike in an incredible place, a unique place. Uh, it's done all over different trails uh, in the area of the Estancia that has more than 80,000 acres of extension. Mm -hmm. um, also, in the Estancia Bonanza, you can do the Via Ferrata as well, hanging from the walls uh, of the massive mountains that can help you to see a panoramic view, a three, uh, very, very interesting view of uh, the Mount Fitzroy or the Mount El Chalten as well as it is known. Um, all these activities have a length of around four and a half hours, including transfers from uh, downtown El Calafate. Um, you have departures uh, at 8.30 in the morning and at 2.30 p.m. Uh, you can also do rock climbing as well. Um, there are, in, in all of the different activities, there are no uh, prior experience required. In general, they are very well controlled and very well handled by the staff of the Estancia. And also you can do um, horseback riding um, in the different areas of the Estancia. As you can imagine, uh, this Estancia has a lot of different areas to, to see. Uh, you have a half day uh, horseback riding that you can do as a possibility. Otherwise, you can do the horseback ride to Lita Lagoon, which is really easy, but it's a full day. You get a, a lunch in the middle of, of, uh, of, the, of nowhere, of the Estancia, which is incredible uh, with a wonderful uh, sightseeing of all the area of Del Valle, Rio de las Vueltas, and, and El Chalten. Also, you can do trekkings. You have different options of different levels and difficulties that you can do there, but they are only available for guests. Yes, you can also stay in Estancia Bonanza. And in fact, I'm going to show you some of the um, possibilities that you can uh, see here. Um, in Estancia Bonanza, you have what it's called Puestos de Veranadas which are uh, very nice lofts, which are located on the cliffs, uh, on um, overlooking all the Fitzroy um, mountain. Uh, here you can see, for example, a view from the inside of the Puestos de Veranada. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an incredible sight, an incredible experience to, again, see with some comfort all the all the raw of the of the Patagonia. Also, there is uh, the possibility of staying in the old area of the Estancia where the owners used to live, that is called La Ponderosa. Um, there you can have it available more for families where you can enter uh, with four to six people uh, and also a guest house that can accommodate uh, some more travelers. Here we have some more images uh, of Estancia Bonanza as well. So you can 
try to get a feeling of what it is to experience um, this spe spectacular uh, lodge in, in El Salten. Also, I wanted to briefly show you People cycling. So boring. Well, that is part of the mountain bike experience of Estancia La Bonanza. I don't know if that didn't get you the idea of wanting to go. <laughs> I don't know what will, but it's uh, an incredible place. Uh, also, um, I wanted to let you know that uh, Argentina, it's a past country. You might know that. Uh, it has many more interesting experiences uh, to unveil. Um, also to close this small introduction of things that you can do in El Chalten, I wanted to show you a final video where you can see all the places that uh, are very worthwhile to see in Argentina. Maybe this video Well, uh, that was a bit the, the presentation that we had in our uh, agenda. I, I hope you liked it, you enjoyed it. It was a pleasure for us to try to present these uh, experiences and all the options that you have in, in El Chalten. And well, uh, thank you very much for listening. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Thank you so much, Juan. I'm arranging my trip to Chile at the end of the year. Now I feel like I have to extend my trip to Argentina and Patagonia, Argentina. Yes. Um, Juan, we have a question here from Ines. Hi, are the bike rides operated by Kaupa or organized by the lodges? This specific experience of um, Estancia Bonanza, they are organized by the lodge itself. Uh, Calpatur can organize as well uh, bike tours in El Chalten, uh, specifically according to the interest of the of the travelers. Yes. 
Perfect. Thank you, Juan. Any other questions? Also, if you remember any questions, you can leave it in the chat and then we get back to Juan in the end of the presentations. Juan, I'm going to ask you to put, uh, leave your, your contact in the, in the chat so how Perfect. people can reach you. And Perfect. let's move forward then to Bolivia with Janetti. Welcome, Janet. Hello, hello, everybody. Well, first of all, uh, we thank us, Atlas, to everybody that comes here to to listen to us and to know a little bit our destinations. And I will be more than happy to share with you a little bit of what we can offer you in adventure activities in Bolivia and what Bolivia looks like. Some of the the persons that are on the that are here are our clients and some are not. And so we try to convince the new ones that Bolivia could be a, a nice option also to work with. So let me let me begin with, can you see the screen? Yes, I think so. Yes. Okay. So in reality, the Bolivia Millenaria is a DMC that is located in Bolivia since 21 years. I created a company when I was very young. And um, I'm so happy now that uh, Bolivia is becoming a little bit more uh, into the, the, the market. And that is very, very important because it has been growing a lot since the last since the last 20 years. For uh, for most of the customers, Bolivia is a country that is um it's an Andean country, but in reality, we're not. <laughs> no, uh, Bolivia is in the middle of South America. We have the biggest border with Brazil, and we have uh, um, real borders with Peru, Chile, and Argentina. And one of the nicest parts of the country is that the deepest part of the Amazon is in the Bolivian side, No, and the deepest part of the Andes is also in the Bolivian side, because the Royal Range, the Andes Royal, Royal Range that you can see in the with my with my little thing here, the the Royal Ranch cross here. So we have the deepest part, even though in the Amazon, and the deepest part in the Andes also. If there are some facts that I would like to share with you. So we have one million square kilometers, and we have no more than twelve million habitants. That means that we have a big territory with not too many people. So the possibilities to see pristine places in a country like Bolivia are very, very high. You now, considering the number of people that we live in the country and the and the the different ecosystems that we have in in the country, in the world there are more than one hundred twenty ecosystems. In Bolivia, we have sixty six of the ecosystems of the world. So uh, that is also a, a very interesting fact, uh, considering that 17% of the Bolivian territory is protected, either in national parks or in indigenous territories are uh, lands that are protected by the law. And so that's the reason that there is no a lot of infrastructure, private infrastructure all over the places. No, and this is because of the land belongs to, um, to the local communities or the indigenous communities that lives in the country. Sucre is the capital of Bolivia. A lot of people believe that is La Paz, not at all. Uh, Sucre is our is our capital. La Paz is the administrative city, and we don't, we're not just the the conception of the high altitude place in South America. We have our highest um, volcano is 6,542 meters. That is volcano near Chile. And our lowest point is uh, 30 meters above sea level. So we have different ecosystems in the country that makes a little bit unique mm -hmm. and different. Yeah, the red yeah. part of your screen are the Andes part of Bolivia, no? And this is the part that most people know about the country. So that means the Uyuni salt flats, the Abarra National Reserve, Chile's, Chile, uh, Acama border is around here, and the big territory around here is La Paz. As you see in the screen, the orange one is the lowlands of Bolivia, the jungle part of the Bolivia, the Amazon part. So as you can see, it's the biggest territory. And the yellow one are the valleys of Bolivia. Now, places that are between 1,200 meters to 2,000 meters. So what we do, we prioritize as a company, which places in the country could be nice and could be um, 
uh, interesting for luxury travel. That's something that we focus on adventure travel that we love to offer. Uh, for, for us, luxury doesn't mean um, Ritz Carlton hotels because we don't have that kind of infrastructure, but the possibility to be in a luxury means to be unique in a, an environment that becomes authentic, that becomes unique. 60% of Bolivian territory, it's focused with indigenous people. And the 40% of the of the territory is like Janet. We are a mix of something with something. I don't know with what. No, but um, I'm a mix. In Bolivia, you are able to do a lot of activities because of our ecosystems and of, because of our condition as a country. And the most important part of what the people knows about us is the wow. mountain part. No, the possibility to do climbing, to do trekking, to do hiking are very, very high because of the mountains that we have that are from 2,000 meters up to 6,000 meters. So climbing, trekking, hiking are very, very good alternatives to do uh, to do things in Bolivia. Um, the trekking in Bolivia are a little bit similar to the, all the ones in South America, taking uh, llamas, alpacas, sometimes donkeys that carry things with the porters. No, we are very respectful with the, with the biodiversity that we have in the country. So we are very caring about how uh, how heavy could be the things that the animals will carry with them. We use whole supporters and we like to discover the connections between the Amazon to the Andes or vice versa. Believe is kind of unique. These are the geysers that are close to San Pedro de Atacama. So the possibility is to be unique in the middle of nowhere is something that we can do as a company because we specialize in tailor-made activities and tailor-made experiences. And so for us, it's very interesting and unique as we are a B2B company to learn and to know who's going to be our client. No, depending on who's going to be our client, we like to build up the experiences. We, we, we like to build up the, the experiences that we can be able to offer. Biking in Bolivia is a great opportunity. Biking in the salt flat, biking in, in the mountain, in the mountain pike, we have one of the, the, the most strange roads in the world that is the death road. No, that's a very extreme and, adre and adrenaline um, uh, and adrenaline biking experience. No, and besides that, it's, the, it's the, um, the adventure and the ecotourism that you can be able to have in the country. Um, as we, as I told you before, we are in the deepest part of the Amazon. So the possibilities to observe um, um, animals as jaguars or caimans or black caimans or black turtles are very, very interesting. In 2020, there was a, a very interest, inter, interest mission of scientists that comes to Bolivia, close to La Paz, at, at two hours in the cloud forest, and they discovered 25 new species for the humanity, for the world. So there are a lot of things that happen in a country that there's no much tourism, but in the other side, there's no much people living there. No, it's not just because tourism is because we are big, but we are not too many people living. So Jaguar spot is very, very interesting, close by to Pantanal in Brazil. So the possibility is to create a wonderful experiences between Brazilian Pantanal and Bolivian Pantanal would be a great experience to enter to Bolivian, uh, to uh, in reality to enter to South American experiences and to create wonderful and unique places. Rafting, kayaking are one of the things that we love to offer also in the tailor-made experiences. We have a lot of caving in, in, in the country that is completely unknown. So if you, have, if you have passengers that are interested in active holidays in terms of trekking, hiking, canoeing, a, 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 a speleology or caving, Bolivia it could be a great opportunity to do those kind of uh, activities. As I was telling you, the the biking is something that we love to include in our in our holidays as part of a cultural holiday or as a holiday in terms of adventure. Now we own our glamping since 2018, and our glamping has been thought to be a uh, launch where places are not, uh, doesn't have, in reality, for places that doesn't have enough infrastructure. We have capacity for 35 passengers, so we have 17 tents that we can move from one place to another, especially in places that are, as I told you, doesn't have the infrastructure, or we don't want that there's an infrastructure, like the Jaguar spot or like the beautiful and amazing uh, indigenous communities that are in nearby Sucre, or the beautiful places that are close to La Paz. This is an amazing place that there's 45 minutes from La Paz. Know that you can do some trekkings in the area that becomes unique. 
expertise of ourselves and also the possibilities to do in Bolivia. Authentic holidays means learning and being with local people, local communities, that they don't perform a show for you, that these are real people in the real daily living is something that Bolivia can be can be a, can be a good point. Now, if you are interested in sustainable activities that we can be able to share and to show um, the importance of communities, the importance of ecosystems, the importance of living with the people in in the in the right level with the Mother Earth is something that also Bolivia can be great. I think so. A slow holidays of the beaten track and the social distance that now is very very common and our glamping is a great place for for doing that. Being far for everybody, <laughs> no, that I think it's a, it's something that Bolivia Millenaria can offer. Uh, we are we specialize in thematic programs that create with a little lifestyle. I love to include in all the programs and I love to tailor the programs for the passengers. We have a small um, a small designers in the company. We are four and we are, um, we love to create relationship with our clients. We're not a massive company. So we're not a corporation. We, we are a boutique company that like to create relation with our partners and build up that relation. So for us, the thematic programs, the lifestyle, coffee, chocolate, um, um, for example, the wine experiences, those are the things that we love. For us, the food is very, very important. You no, know, And the cultural experience in the real life that you can get in Bolivia is something that we love to do. Off road glamping, trekking, the gourmet experience, some of the, some of the restaurants that are the 50 best are in Bolivia right now. The owners of Noma in Copenhagen create a restaurant 12 years in Bolivia. And so Bolivia is becoming a little bit different in terms of private tours, private experiences. If you are interested to do bird watching, for example, the last four years, we have been awarded uh, several times as the third country in Latin America for bird watching. No photo safari is also a great also. Fly fishing is something that we love to offer as a fly fishing. Now cultural interaction with people in the lowlands in the or in the in the highlands, considering that we have 18 Amazonian tribes that lives in the lowlands in Bolivia, and more than eight different ethnical communities that lives in the high in the highlands. So the country is very rich in terms of of uh, eth ethnical groups in reality. Um, for us, the authenticity and the identity of Bolivia, you can see in the local people, you know, in the style of the living of the people, the mansion of the uh, of the people that lives in the Andes are very focused in the syncretism and in the religious syncretism in reality that we have in the country. The Catholic beliefs with the with indigenous belief is part of our daily living. It doesn't matter if you become from one part of the society, if you are from a high level, if you're from the low level, you have the same syncretism in your daily living, no? So I believe in God, but at the same time, I believe in the, in the God of luck, no? That I pray every 24th of January, no? That's part of our, our syncretism. For us, the mountains are spirits that we really, really uh, uh, pray. So the, the indigenous people ask them to and call them for benefits and for blessing every time that you want to climb up or everyone you want to do a hike or a trek. So that is the nicest part in terms of not just being in the nature, it's also interacting with, uh, with the culture at the same time. You can see llamas from llamas and bikunas in the in the in the Andes to the pink dolphins and black caimans in the lowlands. So the possibility is to interact with biodiversity in the country is very very high, and doing family tours or doing activities with kids becomes a great experience for for the country because you can do a very very interactive interactive holiday with them. Um, I'm a fan of wine, music, and the self love comes also <laughs> as part of the experience. But I guess wine and music is very, very unique. We're a very folk or country. We have a very rich music thing. And in the last 10 years, we have been awarded as with a very good wines in the country because of our, our altitude. No? Uh, 80% of Bolivia, uh, uh, of Bolivia tourism roads are asphalt, we have an asphalt road. So that means that you don't need to sacrifice the experience. You no, know? we love to include in our experience small hotels with charming personality. You no, know, we love to create exclusive holidays depending on the profile of our, our partners. We are 
99% of our companies B2B. So for us, it's very important the experience with the partners. And we have in-house tour guides. We have our, our own transportation. Uh, we have a little boat in the Lake Titicaca. And for us, Bolivia is for people that is looking for authenticity, adventure, simplicity, and a remote experiences. No, we um, we love the idea to create itineraries for you. I will show it to you. I will copy Juan. This was not in my plans, but I'm copying him. <laughs> no, uh, I will I will show it to you. Um, some uh, some experiences that we can offer you. Uh, that let me see. Uh, no, this is not the right thing that I want to show you. Uh, let me one second. I think the copy is not good. <laughs> and uh, let me see. I guess so. I have to show you some 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 sample activities that you can do in the country, uh, with some tours that we can offer you. But I don't. Ah, uh, here is it. There you go. There are some activities that Bolivia can be able to offer you in terms of um, doing a whole holiday in the country and not doing just an extension with the other countries. So you can offer Bolivia with San Pedro Atacama, that's become more common uh, now, or with the North Africa, Argentina, Salta, Jujuy, Tilcara, Pulmamarca, that's amazing, or with Peru, with Puno, with Cusco. So you can be able to combine Bolivia with the other destinations, but you also can be able to sell Bolivia by itself. No? And here is an example of that experience that you can be able to, to, to do in Bolivia. So doing like a Full day tour in La Paz. La Paz is located at 3,600 meters above civil sea level, but the nicest hotels are at 3,200 meters, the same altitude as Cusco. No, and from La Paz, we can do to El Alto. El Alto is a satellite city that's nearby where the indigenous peoples owns an impressive mansions, but very, very impressive. That can be able to show you the wealthy. Indian local Andean people that lives in the area. Besides of that, Tiwanaku is a very nice experience to combine a tour uh, if you want to know more about the archaeological sites in Latin America. Tiwanaku has been considered one of the first civilizations in Latin America uh, and it's very, very interesting if you think that what was happening in this world 500 years before Incas. Another element that's interesting about Bolivia is the cloud forest. At one hour and a half from La Paz, you can be able to descend to the cloud forest, similar to the one in Costa Rica, now, where you can be able to see impressive places to have coca, coca, coca leaves, that's for Bolivians are very important, not the other thing, the coca leaves. No, for us, coca is very important for our traditions, for our health, and for us, um, the opportunities to see the coca plantations that are in the cloud forest is part of the experience, and to see coffee also producers, and in the nearby area that's just one hour and a half from the past, you can be able to interact with nature in a very, very short time. Closer to, 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 to the valleys in Bolivia, in part of the program, we fly to Sucre, where is our capital. Sucre is a very aristocratic city, similar to Arequipa, if you have been to, is in reality the sister of Arequipa. And it's a very, very impressive city, even though it's our capital, the interaction with different communities that lives in the area gives you another sense because the people from La Paz in terms of indigenous um, customs doesn't are not similar to the ones that lives in Sucre and Potosi that are Quechua. In La Paz Aymaras, in Sucre and Potosi Quechua. No, and then it comes the salt, the salt flat, the biggest salt flat in the world that you can see it in the rainy season from November to March. That is beautiful, full of water, or in the uh, dry season that comes from March to November. That is also impressive. Nearby the Uyuni salt flat is the National um, Avaroa Reserve, one of the nicest places to be full of geysers, hot springs, a lot of biodiversity as flamingos, uh, Andean fox, and puma also. Did I say puma? Yes, I said puma. So you have, uh, you have a, a great option and opportunity that we can be able to create a personalized itinerary for your company, depending on your profile or what you expect to sell your passengers. So thank you so much for your time. And it's my pleasure to to assist you and to help you to organize a program in my country.
Amazing. Thank you so much, Annette. I love how Argentina, Chile, and Bolivia connect, but they're actually three very large and diverse countries. And yeah, it's a shame to, to combine and to miss the other things that uh, there's so much to see in each of each country. <laughs> well, if you have any questions, uh, please just raise your hand or leave them on the chat. Any question to, to Jeanette? Hans, are you do okay? Just <laughs> okay. So let's move forward to Isabel and Cascada Expeditions and Chile. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Anna, and, and thank you, Juan and Janet, for those great presentations. Uh, as you say, uh, these three countries are very easy to connect through the north or through the south. So let's tell you more about uh, Cascada and, and Chile. Okay, my name is Isabel Menendez. I'm the sales manager for Cascada Expediciones and Eco and Patagonia. So let me just share my presentation. Okay, so uh, Cascada Expediciones is a Chilean-based tour operator. Um, we can tell you more about the history about uh, Cascada. This oh. is a company uh, created in 1991, so over 30 years uh, operating trips in Chile. Uh, it started as a dream of three friends from college, uh, Jerko, Javier, and Nani. It started as a, a rafting company, but then expanded to other um, destinations and other kind of activities uh, in the rest of country. In 2001, uh, we landed in Patagonia and created uh, EcoCamp Patagonia that some of them, some of you may know. Uh, we opened in 2001 and since then we have been um, uh, leaders in terms of trekking programs in Patagonia and sustainable accommodations. Um, our mission is to provide and encourage deep connections with nature, with nature, active, uh, promote an active lifestyle, and the sustainable development of the environment and the different uh, um, cities and places where we uh, provide services, always trying to connect with uh, the local people. As you may know, uh, Chile is a long and thin country, right? So that gives us different landscapes, different kind of weather as well. And so in the, in the north, we have uh, the Atacama Desert. Uh, it's the driest uh, desert in the world. And this is uh, where San Pedro de Atacama is located, jewel of the north. And from here, you can connect uh, uh, with Bolivia and Argentina. Um, actually, many people connect uh, San Pedro de Atacama with the Uyuni salt flat uh, in Bolivia, right, Janet? Um, and then we come to the central area of the country with where Santiago, our capital city, is located and where you can visit uh, some coastal cities like Valparaíso and some wine valleys as well. Um, then we move to the south where the Lake District is located, uh, beautiful lakes and volcanoes and a lot of mountains to climb over there. And then we go to uh, Patagonia, to the southern part of, of the country where you, we can find uh, Torres del Paine National Park, uh, which is one uh, of the main highlights in, in Chile, as well as, as Easter Island. So if we go from top to bottom, uh, we can visit the Atacama Desert. Uh, this is located in a two hour flight distance from Santiago and it's located in 8,000 feet altitude. So you have to have that in consideration as well. 
um, some of the iconic excursions that we uh, offer in, in the area is the amazing Moon Valley that you can visit in the morning or in the afternoon for sunset to get the best views and the best light. Uh, we can also visit the geysers of Del Tatio, which are amazing, and uh, the Le lagoons Miscanti and Miñique. Those two uh, places, the geysers Del Tatio and the lagoons, are quite um, in a high point of altitude, nothing too challenging, but uh, we try to create always the programs starting with some climat acclimatization in, in, the, in, the, in San Pedro before getting to these different points. Other excursions that uh, we can offer in, in the area are uh, the ballooning in the, in the sunrise, the Rainbow Valley and the astronomical night tour. I don't know. close to the sea, like Concha y Toro, uh, which is a very famous winery um, that uh, many clients already uh, know and ask to visit. Then we can go to the mountains, so uh, we can offer a rafting trip. It's just in a half day from uh, Santiago and, and also a hike to a local volcano ending in the, in the hot springs located nearby. So this is a very uh, nice experience to, to go and visit uh, in Cajon del Mai. That's how it's located, named, sorry. Um, then you can go, as I, as I mentioned, to the coast. In, in one hour and a half, you're in Valparaíso and Viña del Mar. Valparaíso is a world heritage city. Uh, very interesting uh, to, to see. It's very, very similar maybe to places like Lisbon uh, with their hills and their colorful houses. Um, and we also launched um, a new uh, hike through the coast through next to the Pacific Ocean, which is very nice and very recommended for people that want to see more of the seaside in Chile. Uh, Easter Island is one of the most uh, famous uh, islands in, in, in the world. It's located uh, in, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, uh, the flight from Santiago takes six hours, and we uh, are having seven flights uh, a week this year from Santiago to Easter Island. So it's very easy to connect with this amazing place. So, um, of course, the culture is very strong. Uh, you can visit different ceremonial sites, uh, the crater of a volcano, uh, and also Rani Raraku, the place where the Moais were born. And then we have the Lake District, uh, located only two uh, hours uh, away from Santiago by air. Uh, and it's an amazing place full of nature, full of lakes and volcanoes. So we can visit um, Perez Rosales National Park, uh, the amazing Todos Los Santos Lake. This is a, a, a lake where that you can cross and then connect with Bariloche in Argentina. We have several hikes to do in this park as well. One of them is Paso Desolación. And we can also uh, see one of the oldest uh, trees in the world, the Alerce. So we can visit the Alerce Andino National Park as well. 
and raft through the Petrowe River. Very fun activity in the area. Uh, so if we continue to the south, we get to the end of the world. We get to Punta Arenas, actually the city where I was born. Uh, it's located um, far hours flying from Santiago. And it's uh, a great place um, to connect with uh, also uh, cruises like the Australis cruise that connects Punta Arenas with Ushuaia and also uh, Antarctica 21, uh, the Chilean cruise to Antarctica, and of course, others. So uh, we can always think uh, as Punta Arenas, not uh, as the starting point to, to Patagonia, but also a way to explore the end of the world. Some excursions that you can do in Punta Arenas, of course, the city tour, uh, it's always interesting to know more about the city that used to be, that is located in the shores of the Strait of Magellan. Uh, the Strait of Magellan used to be the passage uh, between uh, the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean before the creation of the Panama Channel. So it's very interesting in terms of culture. You can visit also Fort Bullness, uh, the image that you can see at the bottom. Uh, Fort Bullness uh, was the first settlement before Punta Arenas uh, became the, the, the main city. And also some uh, uh, nice hikes to the Magellan Forest Reserve in the, at the top of, of Punta Arenas and, and the, the boat trip to Magdalena Island to see this amazing colony of Magellan penguins. Uh, it's a, a really um, a place where you can only see penguins in a lighthouse, nothing else. It's about 60,000 penguins, so it's really worthwhile seeing. And as you know, Punta Arenas is the starting a point to get to the one of the most amazing places in Chile, uh, Torres del Paine National Park. It is located uh, five hours away from Punta Arenas, two hours away from Puerto Natales. You can also fly into Puerto Natales. There are less flights and it may be a little more expensive, but you really uh, uh, save three hours of driving. So. Uh, it, it works, it's, it's worth it to take a look uh, at those tickets. And it's also a, a place that you can connect with uh, Argentina uh, through Al Calafate. It's located six hours uh, away. And I wanted to tell you uh, about Eco Can Patagonia as well. That's our lodge in Torres del Paine National Park. It's an eco lodge. Uh, that was built in 2001. And this is our base to uh, provide the different programs that we have in Torres del Paine. We have three categories of domes, the standard, the superior, and the suite domes. And uh, we want to combine this with activities like yoga. So we have a yoga dome. We offer free classes for all of our clients, all of our guests, every day. Uh, we also have a massage room called Mankyo Ken. And uh, we focus on nature and active programs. So these are some of the species that you can see in Torres del Paine uh, National Park. And the, the programs that we offer uh, that has a special uh, focus on, on, on nature and wildlife are the Patagonian Wildlife Safari. This is basically a program that you can find in any hotel in, 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 in the park as, as, as you can choose excursion every day uh, uh, depending on, on your interest. And, and we always try to, to have uh, active and moderate and soft excursions so everybody can join, okay? We also try to visit some places that are, uh, we have the popular ones, of course, but we also 
have some alternative excursions that are well appreciated by the guests. Um, many years ago, we started uh, operating this program. It's a, a, a wildlife experience that is really amazing. Uh, it's uh, called Six Day Puma Tracking. Um, you spend all these days looking for pumas in the park. You get to see the park, but uh, it's uh, the number of pumas that you can find in the park uh, is growing every year. So even uh, when there's a healthy populations, population of pumas in the park, as you can see, the, the color of the fur is very similar to the surrounding, uh, to the pampa, to the coiron. The, the grass, the Patagonian grass. So, so it's not as easy to see them as we think. So we created this great program with great guides and trackers. So you can have these amazing pictures and videos uh, that you may already see in some, in, in, in some documentaries that, been, that have been released in, in the last few years. We also uh, launched a new program this season that combines Argentina and Chile and Patagonia. It, it has a special focus on nature, wildlife, but also in some cultural aspects. So for people who are looking for a, a slow travel experience that really want to get to see a nature and learn about the local culture, this is a, a, a great itinerary to, to propose to them. And then um, where we started from, uh, the trekking and the active programs, because Torres del Paine is not only an amazing place in terms of scenery, it's also very popular in terms of trekking. Uh, we have three versions of the W track. Uh, I would say the most uh, popular uh, trekking program in, in the park. Um, we have the seven day W track. Then we have a shorter version of the W track, which is the five day W track. They all have set departures. And then last season, we launched a different uh, way to start the W track. It's called the brush variant. And, and the main difference is that we start from Puerto Natales, we take a boat and we get into the, to the fjords, into the channels, and we start walking towards uh, the park. So on the right, you can see some uh, pictures of the mountains, the pine and massive uh, uh, at the back, but you, together, you go through this wet forest and glaciers, uh, which is a really uh, a, a great experience for the clients, especially uh, when the national park is, is, is getting more crowded every year, something very similar to what uh, Juan was telling uh, for Chatten. So, so we are too looking for different experiences so clients can really feel what it is to hike in the wild. Uh, then we have the nine day circuit. This is the ultimate track, the most demanding one. So, so really for the brain, <laughs> but you get to see this kind of images. Uh, the Southern ice field um, is, is really a sea of ice that not many people get to see. Uh, we also have multi-sport experiences uh, like our epic, epic Patagonia, including kayaking, bike excursions, and horseback riding. And we are also offering some uh, experiences, some programs in the winter time. Although Eco Camp, we close it during the winter because everybody, <laughs> everything gets frozen. Uh, we do uh, operate this program with uh, some uh, chosen partners uh, in, in terms of accommodation that remain open through the winter. And, and we, we have uh, the Puma tracking experience also available during winter. It's easier to see the Pumas as you can tell. And, and we also have a winter W track. 
uh, which is uh, operated with uh, some nights in Puerto Natales, uh, some nights in, in Hotel Lago Grey, and one night in the Refugio Paine Grande. Okay, so these are the kind of experiences that Cascada is able to offer. As, as you can tell, we are uh, specialists in Patagonia, but we also offer uh, and look to offer uh, similar experiences in, in the rest of the country. We choose our partners based in, in, in their uh, sustainability practices, but also uh, we want to have clients staying in small properties, some boutique hotels, not uh, main chain uh, hotels, but uh, those really uh, selected uh, services that may combine well with the experience that we are used to provide in Patagonia. So thank you very much. I know that we are close to the end. We, I think we are over um, our time. If you want to connect with us, please send us an email to these uh, email addresses. I will share this in, in the uh, chat as well. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, Isabel. Amazing. Well, can't wait to be in Chile next October. Um, everybody, thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can either ask now or Isabel is going to leave her contacts. She just left it here. So we are happy to help you visiting these amazing countries in Latin America. Thank you so much and hope, it, hope to see you next Thursday at 5 p.m. UTC or GMT, if you will. And then we'll be presenting some more amazing itineraries from Ecuador, Brazil, and Uruguay. Hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much.